So I'm guessing you forgot to plug the mic in? Yeah, that's pretty much what happened. What am I supposed to do with all this footage that has no audio? I don't know, man. I'm just the detailer. <laughs> no, I'm the detailer. You're the guy that's supposed to be making YouTube videos. Seems like you're the one sitting behind the computer there, bub. Yeah, with no audio. Well, now it sounds like you're a voiceover actor. Yeah, I guess that's what I'm gonna have to do. That's what it sounds like. Not gonna help me at all with this, are you? Nope. <sighs> Fair enough, Look, man, I was okay. I'm trying to run a business. I'm trying to be the detail. You had, you had all the equipment that you needed, okay? You had the microphone. Seems like the audio is working now. Seems like the audio is working now. Do promote more marketing. I'm trying to figure out my clients. Trying to do all of this stuff. And this is really difficult to do. At least plug in a microphone. We spent hours upon hours taking footage. I'm sitting here. I'm working on this. Okay, so it's all getting done. Everything's getting done. Everybody's happy. Everybody's happy. The video's already completed. And now I gotta go back and do all the audio over again. All right, guys, working on this huge to video where you're getting the best professional quality content that money can pay for. And that's zero, by the way. So, uh, you know, well worth your dollar bills, bust your wallets out. This video is gonna be the top 10 detailing tips and tricks that I can give you to be efficient in your job and be profitable. Now, whether you're a weekend warrior kind of guy or you run a professional business, each one of these tips can help you do your job a little bit faster so you're not spending the entire weekend, you know, out in the driveway detailing your car. And then especially if you own a business, this will make you more profitable. These are things um, like do's and don'ts and then things that you do not wanna miss. So I hope these help you guys out. Sorry about the audio not being there. But anyways, we're gonna make it happen. That's all coming up now. On this episode of Restore, Protect, and Preserve. Check it out. First one's gonna be pretty simple and that's wearing protection. Whether it's gloves, goggles, or a respirator, we deal with harsh chemicals and most of the time, completely random vehicles. Take necessary precautions to protect your skin, lungs, and eyes. When you've been doing it for years like I have, your body will thank you. This next one's gonna be more geared towards the professionals. If you have clients that have left items in their vehicle, assume nothing is trash. Obviously, use your best judgment. I've also made it a practice in my business to get written consent from clients to clean out their center console or glove boxes. This can seriously help you avoid any sort of liabilities in the future, because more often than not, valuables are stored in those two areas, and adopting this practice will ensure all items are accounted for and that they stay with the owner. I cannot stress how necessary this is to protect yourself. The next step is going to be all about vacuuming. The goal in detailing is to do as much work as you can with as little steps as possible. First thing I do is assess the vehicle and determine if a pre-vacuum is necessary. And what I mean by that is, if the carpet is full of loose contaminants and debris, it may be best to do a pre-vacuum to get the majority of those contaminants out before introducing any sort of pressurized steam or doing the initial cleaning. I'll start at the back of the vehicle by pushing both the driver and passenger seat fully forward so I can get underneath both seats as much as possible. Detail the back end, place the floor mats back, and push the seats back as far as they can, and detail the front of the vehicle. When you've finished with your pre-vacuum, initial detail, and final vacuum, just remember to check your work, and remember that under the seats and the carpeting between the seats and the center console is always the tricky part, but don't forget about it. Tip number four is gonna be all about overspray. When you're using any kind of products, whether it be for cleaning plastics, glass, door jam seats, or even heavy soiled areas, you wanna spray the product on the towel and not on the surface. Spraying products on the surface can overspray on other surfaces you'd rather clean with different towels and products, and you'll just be going over yourself. Also, I'll, I'll mention this, I prefer not to use products on the steering wheel, pedals, gear shifts, or floor mats. If the products that you use happen to be slippery, these areas can cause trouble for the driver, so it's best to clean them, but not have them slippery. Also, since we're talking about overspray, let's go ahead and talk about categorizing our towels. All right, here's a detailing tip that's not exclusively just for the interior. This is a, a general detailing tip, and that is microfiber towels. So as far as technology goes, this is the biggest advancement in technology tools, and you know, that's ex it's including you know, vacuum steam cleaners and 
and this and that extractors all that stuff microfiber towels have completely changed the game when they came out so with that being said this is the one thing that's between you and whatever vehicle you're detailing so investing in high quality detailing towels is essential you have to do it right they'll last a lot longer and the results will be a lot better so definitely invest in high quality towels the ones that i have about a dollar fifty a piece um, so they you know anything past a dollar is a good um kind of a good general price point <clears throat> don't go to walmart and buy those big bundles for five dollars i promise you you will not be happy with them um and and definitely won't like the results so uh, again can't stress that enough and with microfiber towels um, even though these are color coded, a lot of these are the same quality, organizing them and having specific roles for them so that you don't cross contaminate. That's the, that's the tip that we're going to be talking about here is cross contamination. So each one of these towels has a specific purpose, right? So starting from this side, I've got this red towel, which you can see and has been worn out, right? This used to be this towel, right? These are, these are much older. So these are my, what I call throwaway towels. So I'd use these for engines. I'd use these for wheel wells, door jams, that kind of thing. And then once I use them, throw them away. There's no, I, I'm not going to wash them with any of these other towels. You know what I'm saying? Um, so throw away towels, one time use, right? Um, and these are the much older ones than these. These white terry towels I use for steam cleaning any kind of stain or anything out of the carpets, right? These are great because they don't have dyes in the towels like other ones do. So, um, these will definitely uh, they won't leak dye on the interior and will pull up any kind of stain that you're dealing with uh, these are low pile waffle weave towels these are what i found to be the best glass towels um, so what i'll do is i do two of these uh, multi-purpose towels with one of these and do the three towel method on glass and that gives me um, glass without streaks gives me great results so again going with this one this is my all-purpose interior towel this red one again high pile um, but um, I'm sorry medium pile but great for uh, interiors and stuff like that uh, these are high pile and these are great for removing wax so when I put sealants on or anything like that these are great buffing towels these are paint towels for high-end cars if I'm uh, not using a wash mitt if it's a rare car or I can't um, wash the vehicle with like a pressure washer or anything like that um, this is the towel that I'll use so I've used these on like really old cars where like maybe the gaskets are worn out or I don't have access to water or whatever and I have to use a waterless method or I have to use just the bucket method where you have you know 15 of these towels in one soapy bucket and once you kind of do your four sides you toss it and go to the next towel <clears throat> these are great for that and then these blue ones are for wheels. Um, so again, each one doesn't cross contaminate. And then again, with paint correction, I've got towels for polish and I've got towels for compound and they don't, they don't go together. These all get washed separately. Cause again, if you throw the wheel towel in with your really high end paint towel, <clears throat> you're going to cross contaminate those even in the wash. So if you want more information on any of these, I'll post a link in the description below. It kind of talks about um, the different kinds of microfibers, microfiber buying guide, and then obviously how to take care of those. Um, so this goes with this, organize your towels, have specific towels for specific uses. And then when you're detailing, don't cross contaminate, keep them separate. So with detailing, we're often not praised for what we do right. We're often marked what we do wrong. This is a luxury business, um, you know, after all. And so sometimes maybe it's a little bit of wax between two door panels. Sometimes it's streak on glass and sometimes it's hidden compartments in the interior. When you're doing an interior detail, make sure you fine tooth comb through the entire interior and make sure you see any kind of hidden compartments. Maybe it's a spot where they keep a workbook. Maybe it's where they keep their loose change. Car manufacturers will find spots in the interior for storage because that benefits the client. The, the customer of the, the you know the owner of the vehicle so make sure that you're going through this because if you were to happen to miss one of these spots and the client gets in the vehicle and the next day opens up a tray and realizes that it's dirty there's now doubt on in the entire interior tip number six is cord awareness now we've gotten into the habit when we're polishing paint to put the cord over our shoulder so that we don't scratch the paint the same rule applies to vacuums steam cleaners and extractions whatever machine you may be using and their respected hoses and cords these hoses can rub against the paint and cause serious scratches in the door panel. Paint in the door panel is much thinner than paint on the exterior of the vehicle. So once scuffed up, polishing may not be an option. But do what I do. 
I like to tuck the hose between my legs. It gives me just enough slack to be able to do the work that I'm doing without the hose touching the paint. It's also a good rule not to drag the hose across the interior to do the other side because hoses can and will get dirty from being dragged around on the ground and contaminants from those can be pulled into the interior of the vehicle. Instead, grab your machine and walk it around to the other side of the vehicle and then it'll save you the hassle. All right, so the two things that we find difficult in the interiors, uh, apart from stains and things like that, is pet hair and sand. Here, living here in Florida, sand is, a, is abundant, so I have to deal with it all the time. So having the right kind of tools to be able to take care of those issues without wasting a bunch of time is absolutely necessary. So with pet hair removal, manufacturers have multiple different types of carpeting in their vehicles and their makes and models. And so with that variety of different kinds of carpet pilings, heights, and, and things like that, along with different pet hair lengths and, and thicknesses and things like that. There's so many combinations of, of things that you're gonna have to deal with. And so with that, I encourage you to have multiple tools to deal with the situation that you have. So with the Chevy Silverado, the Lily Palm Brush worked perfectly for that kind of carpeting. Um, this, uh, in conjunction with another tool, is my two go-tos. So again, this is the Lily Palm Brush, and this is great for getting, uh, you can do the majority of the vehicle and be totally fine. Um, but this is great uh, because it's rubber getting around the tight corners around plastics and not scratching it definitely definitely worth the buy the ten dollar buy <clears throat> when i said it was in conjunction uh, with this pumice tool right here so this pumice rock it is a porous rock um, that is really great at getting pet hair out of carpeting um, so you would use this uh, again if the lily brush wasn't working on you and the larger areas use this and then use the lily brush to get in to those tight corners where the plastics meet. I, when I was a pool chemist, I used to use this a lot to clean calcium off of pool tile and uh, it did not scratch or damage the tile. So it's kind of cool to see that this tool has transitioned from one career to another and uh, works just as effectively uh, just on a completely different set of uh, circumstances. With Lily Brush, they also sell a variety of different tools. So they sell this um, this long one right here, this long rubber one, and this is great for getting in between the center console and the seats. And uh, and I thought when I first saw it, the length of it and that it's plastic, that it was going to be fragile. Um, but the threads actually from this, because they separate the threads from this, are probably about an inch, maybe even a little bit longer. So it goes really far into this neck uh, and is incredibly sturdy. It's not going to break on you. Um, so definitely encourage buying that and then this one right here it's got of course the rubber end and then this carpeting brush right here and this works great um, with that having a different variety of carpet brushes right so this is my I've been using this one for years uh, to remove stains um, this is my you know multi-purpose carpeting brush uh, this is a pad cleaner that I use for just carpet and then of course you have your drill brush attachments and not only do I use this to remove pet hair, but I use, I use this to remove stains as well. So incredibly versatile and highly effective. <clears throat> Sometimes even just a latex glove actually dry, or if you spray a little bit of water on your hand with the glove on, um, can actually remove pet hair as well. So again, the point that I want to make is that there's no one size fits all tool, that having multiple tools to deal with multiple circumstances is the way to go. And these are relatively cheap and easy to acquire. So build up a little collection and you'll be glad that you did. So whether you're cleaning the plastic storage liners like in this SUV, or if you're cleaning where the spare tire goes, both areas are extremely sensitive. The plastic can scratch very easily, as well as the paint where the spare tire goes. I'm gonna show you a very simple trick to be able to clean those two areas without doing any damage. All you're gonna need is your vacuum and a simple brush. Using a crevice tool back and forth on the plastic can cause scratches, do not do that. Use the brush instead to guide the debris to the vacuum cleaner with the crevice tool off the plastic. You can also take your finger and go below the crevice tool, giving a space between the plastic and the crevice tool. Move your finger back and forth, this will vacuum the debris. It is a good idea to use sandpaper and actually sand the edge of the crevice tool so it's safe on your skin. It's a good rule of thumb. And this will create amazing results without damage. Tip number nine is going to be about cleaning around electronic components. When you're doing any sort of detailing, especially when you're using a steam cleaner, be mindful of introducing too much moisture or liquids around the components, especially around the instrument cluster on the dash. Once moisture, whether it be from products or steam cleaners, gets behind that display glass and the instrument cluster, the only way to get to behind there is to rip apart the dash, which you can appreciate is a nightmare. Also be careful about sensitive areas such as touch screens, plastic trims that can easily scratch, or introducing too much moisture around buttons. 
make sure to follow the category rule when it comes to microfiber towels and using the appropriate towels for each situation. Again, spraying the product on the towels and not on the surface. This is also an area where you're going to find the most hidden compartments, so make sure you check everything and also don't forget the sun visor mirrors. All right, now that we got the interior dialed in and everything is done, the last step that we're going to do is we're going to do the glass. Now, remember that three tile method. I'm going to explain kind of the best way to get the results without getting streaks. And I'm going to show you on this uh, door uh, pane. And then I'm also going to show you in the windshield because the windshield is the most difficult to get the, the right results. Because again, if a you know, client gets in to a vehicle after you know long day's work of detailing and there's streaks on the windshield that's the first thing they're going to see and then again that hold down on that interior is done uh, is, you know is there so you don't want that doubt so again um, i don't put these on like the paint or in the interior or anything like that i keep them on my shoulders i want them clean 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 right so the only two towels that are going to get product is your first towel and then your second towel your waffle weave this one's going to be clean so this is going to go first this is going to get the majority of the contaminants right and use your best judgment um, you know obviously if you have you know a really really clean window um, such as this one um, you could probably step down to a two towel method um, again I'm just kind of doing this for demonstrations purposes right so we'll go through and put this up here on the shoulder uh, product side up three sprays just a couple right we've went through we've got the majority of the contaminants out now we're gonna go and we're gonna pick up with this one all of the oils so the reason why this is kind of a a multi-purpose um, medium pile towel um, is because it's good at picking up contaminants this waffle weave is not very thick it's it's very thin and so it's really good for picking up oils but not contaminants Kind of the verse or uh, the the opposite with this the more multi-purpose towels are good at picking up contaminants but will leave oils so again product side up and then this one is dry and then you can go back and clean and buff anything else that might be on there. Now when I'm done with this, what I'll do is I'll roll this window down a little bit and get that, that edge of the glass. Roll it back up, make sure that this is all clean. Um, but I, I do steam clean these rubber, uh, these weather strips. Um, so it should be clean, but again, roll it back up. Just kind of do the, uh, the, the little edge right there that you rolled down. Um, now again, a lot of people say this is this is ridiculous. This is an overkill blah blah blah. I use newspaper and vinegar Everybody's got their thing and you know, there's no one way to do this um, This is the way that I like to do it because this is like guaranteed No matter if it's sunny if it's dark if it's wet if it's whatever No matter what the weather no matter my lighting I know that when I walk away this window is clean and I don't have to deal with streaks because again if I right now It's not very sunny but later on today, if they're driving home with a vehicle or whatever, and now there's streaks, I'm screwed. So yes, this is overkill. Is it necessary? I, I think so, because it only takes a couple of seconds. So again, use your best judgment, dial it into your vehicle. But this is how I would do um, door window panes. And let me show you now how I'm gonna do the windshield. Okay, so I'm gonna be leaning. So I took the towels off my shoulder. Again, they're product side up, but the dash is, is really clean, but we're only using these sides. So make sure whatever side you're using, make sure it's not leaned on anything. We talked about overspray, especially with um, windshields or any kind of glass, anything in the interior. You wanna spray on the towel. You do not wanna spray here, like all over the window, because now you gotta clean the headliner. You've gotta clean the river mirror. You've gotta clean the dash. It's just a mess. You're just chasing yourself. So. You know, do the fourths, right? A couple sprays. And then what you want to do is you want to get in the interior. You want to put your hand on the driver's seat. And that will allow you to get all the way to the edge of the driver side. All the way to the edge to the passenger. Right? And again, we're using our big towel. Our big towel. Our multi-purpose towel that we use to pick up contaminants. Right? Product side up. Take our glass towel. I'm gonna do with one spray. Okay. 
And then now we take our buffing towel. Okay. All right, guys, I hope these tricks helped you out and it makes you more efficient and more profitable as a detailer. If you're a weekend warrior kind of guy, I hope that these tricks help you out so that you can rush through, you know, and get the car done to the level of your quality without spending an entire Sunday. You know, nobody wants to miss time with their family detailing their car on the weekend, you know, so hopefully this make it a little bit faster. Uh, if you guys have any tips that maybe I missed, maybe I didn't think was important enough to throw in this video, put in the comments uh, for suggestions. Uh, maybe I'll do another one of these if I get enough suggestions, but you know, help everybody out, start that dialogue up. So uh, thank you guys so much for watching. I appreciate it. If you got anything from this video, go ahead and like and subscribe. Do all that thing that all the YouTubers tell you to do. Uh, it really, really helps out and I really appreciate it. And it's free. All this information is free. So why wouldn't you do it, you know? Uh, so anyways, thank you so much, guys. I appreciate it. And if I can help, send me an email at dogreen at ymail.com if you have any questions or you want to get in contact, anything like that. And as always, guys, I'll see you out in the field.